when you get there, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Psalm chapter 31. I'm going to read one verse this morning. Psalm chapter 31. In verse number 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that we can come into your presence. Lord, we know that you inhabit the praises of your people. Now, Father, as we have worshipped you, we've exalted your name, and we trust that we are in your very presence. We thank you, Lord God, that in you we live, we move, and have our being. We thank you, Lord God, that you've given us everything now that pertains to life and godliness. Now, Lord, I ask, Lord God, that you would allow me to minister this message with clarity and easy understanding this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. You know, uh, every, every military force even in our country and other countries around the world, even those in ISIS and other type of uh, branches like that, they have places they, uh, secret training grounds. It's a secret because nobody knows where it's at. It's a place where they go and they train and, and they learn things that other people in the military don't learn. It's reserved for special forces. And so I believe that God has a place, as the Scripture declares for you and I, in a secret place, in a secret pavilion, that you and I can be equipped and can be trained in the things of God. See, this secret place is where God hides you and I from the plots of man. You know that mankind is plotting against you and I. Now, yes, he's using principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and rulers of darkness of this present age. And we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against those demonic forces. But I believe in this secret place is where God hides us from those types of attacks or at least teaches us how to be overcomers from the plots of man. We see where the enemy has used men to walk into schools and walk into theaters and walk into malls and, and terrorize mankind from shooting from hotel buildings and, and different places. But I believe that the children of God, that you and I are in a secret provision. I believe that you and I can be under the provision and protection of the hand of Almighty God. Seeing this is a safe place, but it always don't seem safe. Because it's a training ground. It's where God has brought you and things. In this place, many times God is bringing things out of us that we don't even know that are in us. Many of you have, have seen the movie Facing the Giants. Last night when I went home and finally got settled in, I happened just to... Uh, uh, turn on the television and, and flipped over to Jews television and, and there there it was, facing the giants, it was on. If you've ever seen the movie, there's a scene there when all the football players are on the field. And uh, they're packing one another on their backs. And, uh, you know, they get to about the 20-yard line, that's all they can handle. And he speaks to this young man. He said, I believe you can make it to the 50-yard line. He said, I don't know. He said, I believe, I believe you can do it. 
But first, let me blindfold you. See, in this secret place, many times we are blindfolded even by the hand of God. Because when we look at ourselves, we begin to see our limitations. We begin to see our failures. We begin to see our inadequacy. So here he puts this other player on his back. And as he goes out, he begins to ask coach, have I made it? Am I, am I at the 20? Am I at the 20 yet? He said, surely I've got to be at the 20-yard line by now. And the coach says, don't worry about where you are. You keep moving. You need to hear what I'm saying. Don't worry where you're at. Keep moving. It presses on. He said, it's getting hard. You keep moving. I can't go any further. Give me ten more steps. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. When you're ready to give up, give me ten more. And as he's there struggling, trying to, trying to go to where he thinks the 50-yard line. And he finally makes it, and the coach says, you've made it. And there he believes he's going to be at the 50-yard line. As the coach takes the blindfold off, he realizes, he said, you're not at the 50. You're in the end zone. My God, when God begins to direct us and we begin to walk by faith and not by sight, when we quit looking ourselves and begin to look at Him and hear the voice of our great coach, our great high priest, our advocate, we will do a great and exceedingly abundantly things that are more than we can think or ask. We'll do exploits for the things of God. But in this secret place, it don't always feel safe because it's a training ground to bring things out of us, whether they be our failures and faults and our pride and our inabilities. And many of those times are painful. This young man didn't think he could go no further than the 50, but yet, by being encouraged, the Bible instructs that we are to encourage one another daily. But yet much of the time we get into discouragement one from another. Last week I, I decided not to finish. I, I believe this was the message for, the, for this day, for this hour. I still had a lot to talk to you about Moses uh, from last week. But I will say this. Moses was in a secret place in the desert. God was training Moses to lead a herd of sheep in a desert only to train him later to lead a, a, a nation through another desert. Come on now. What you may see as insignificant and as a failure and as something you've compromised and, and yet God is setting you up in this secret place to bring you out. This provision is a place where you are safe from the words of man. There Moses, he didn't have anybody to, to speak negativity to him. All he heard was the bleeding of sheep. All he heard was what they would say. And sheep don't ever... Now, I'm talking about sheep. This sheep here, the, uh, God's sheep many times will discourage you. I've, I've learned that sheep bite. Sheep bite one another. And many times they bite the shepherd. But in this place, God is protecting you from that, the words of men. What you perceive, and the only way He can protect you from the words of men is to isolate you from men. What many times you perceive as loneliness is God setting you up. And God protecting you from the words and the discouragement of mankind. Don't despise your loneliness. Use it as a time to say, God, I'm in this pavilion. And as I go in this pavilion, David writes in Psalm 91. He said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noiseless pestilence. He shall cover thee with their feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day 
nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and receive the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to bear thee, to keep thee, to, shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt trap on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. And then God begins to speak in verse 14. He says, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy thee and show you my salvation. See, the first thing you need to know about this secret place is that it's a place that God chooses and not you. And when we think about this pavilion, we think about, we may think of something very elegant, something that God brings us into. But I can tell you that it's a place that God chooses. And your secret place may be a valley. Your secret place may be a cave. Your secret place may be in a desert like it was with Moses. Your secret place may be in a prison. Your secret place could even be that of a hospital bed. But it's a place that God is protecting you. It's a God where God is bringing things out of you. Because He does have a special force and a special team. Verse 2, He said, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress and my God, and Him will I trust. See, that's what this place is all about. That's, that's what this pavilion, that's, that's what this secret place is about. And God wants you to stay in that place until you can say, until you can say, it's not what I say, it's not what somebody around you says, but God wants you to be able to say that He is my refuge, He's my fortress, He is my shield, and Him will I trust. See, it's in this secret place that you learn to trust God. It's in the valley where you learn to trust God. It's in the prison where where you learn to trust God. It's in the hospital bed where you learn to trust God. It's in the hospital waiting room where you learn to trust God. It's in the desert, in the place of loneliness that you learn to trust God. And you'll say, He is my fortress. He is my shield and my buckler. And in Him will I trust. See, it's in those places. And that's what this place is all about. It's getting your vocabulary straight to where you call upon God. Because he is called upon me, God says. I will deliver him. Hallelujah. He says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noiseless pestilence. You know, the, the snare was a small trap to catch a, catch a bird in. And I'm telling you, friend, it's the little things. We, we can see the big things of the devil. I mean, we're not stupid. Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant of the vices of the devil. See, Jesus said it was a little, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's the little, it's the little fluttering of the eyes. It's the little smooth talks. It's the little, little looks and the, the little texts and the li, li, little things that we, we need to stay clear of. It's, it's, it's the little things that cause you and I great trouble. It's, it's the little traps that the enemy sets for you and I that will, that will cause you and I to be entrapped. The scripture calls them the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These things are not of the Father, but of the world. See, it's the little, it's the little things. And what happens when the bird gets caught? He don't fly. 
and we're called to soar as up on wiggles, uh, 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 wings of eagles. You and I are called to be, to be in flight, to, to soar. But we, when we get entrapped by these little bitty snares, these little hidden things that the, that the enemy is setting up for you and I, it destroys our flight. It's a little enticements. It's a little extra work that we can do. It's, it's a little things that will pull us away on Wednesday night and, and Sunday mornings. It's a little extra things that, that we perceive as a blessing, but really it's a small trap that the enemy is about to... But he said, I will deliver you. But it goes back to you saying, he is my refuge. It's, it's in, in this secret place you learn to watch out for the snares of the enemy. And he said, from the noise and pestilence. The very word pestilence, or I'm sorry, the very word uh, noise and pestilence. And you think about the noise, the noise, and how men are trying to discourage and destroy us with, our, with their words. But I'm going to tell you right now. How in the world send this training place? You, you, you learn to not pay attention much to what man says about you. And I know in, we live in an age where everybody is self-absorbed. Everybody, I mean, it's, if, if it, my Facebook page, my Twitter, my Snapchat, it's all about me. It's all about, look at me, look at me. And how in the world are you going to learn until you learn to not pay no attention to what man says about you? How are you ever going to stand against what the lies the devil says against you when it affects you what man says? Now listen, I understand that you and I should be able to take correction, reproof, instruction when we need it. Come on now. That's much of the problem with the church world today. They can't handle being reproved. They don't can't handle in correction. They can't handle instruction. Yes, those are needed, and when they're needed, they should be applied with love. But if you can't stand against what man is saying, how are you going to stand against the lies of the devil? Surely I will deliver thee from the snare of the feather and from the noise of the See, that's part of your training. It's to learn to stand against the lies of the devil. Because he, if he can get you to believe his lies, you'll fall. You don't think so? Look here, Eve. God has not said. God didn't say that. God said in the day you eat of this tree, let me tell you something God didn't tell you. You'll be like him. Knowing good and evil. We must learn. Not let the words of men and that of the lies of the devil destroy us. He shall cover thee with, our, with his feathers, and under his wings shall you take refuge. Now you think about this. Now here I'm in a secret place. I'm, I'm in a secret pavilion. Why in the world would I need a refuge in a secret pavilion? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Because I'm going to tell you this pavilion, this secret place... It's not a vacation spot. Let me remind you, it is a training ground. It's a training ground that will challenge you, that will push you, that will stretch you in your faith, stretch you in your walk. It's ultimately, here's, the, here's what happens in this secret place. You're, you're learning to play a game all over. Everybody, everybody in this room has at some point in their life played hide and seek. Amen. When well, God is hiding you in this provision, so you'll learn to seek Him. See, in this provision is where you learn to, where He hides you from man. It's where you learn to seek Him. It's the ultimate game of hide and seek. He does the hiding of you to make you want to seek Him. I'm asking you this morning, are we truly seeking Him? We're seeking His blessings. We're seeking His hand. But seeking Him. Paul said, I just want to know Him and the power of His... I, I, I'm not... I just want to know Him. And you think about all that Paul knew about Him. He said, but I just want to know Him. And we have the promise that when we seek Him, we will find Him. When we search for Him, 
with all our heart. We're searching with our hand stuck out. Give me, give me my but God says search with your heart and, and with not part of it, but all your heart and you will find me. God's not, not wanting to, or He's not wanting to make Himself unknown, but He's set up principles in His Word that when we search for Him, seek with Him with all of our heart, we will find Him. Are you searching for Him today? His truth should be your shield and buckler. Until you get this buckle of truth on, you're always in turbulence. You're always for a bumpy ride. Now, I don't know nothing about turbulence in an airplane because I've never been in one. I've been in a helicopter, and I was strapped down, strapped down to a gurney, right in the middle of a thunderstorm. Now, I don't know, I, I don't know if you ever flew, flew in a helicopter, but you know it's a glass roof and a glass bottom. I mean, you can see above you, and you can see what's going on below you. And when you land there flat to your back and all you see is storm clouds and, and thunder, and, well, you can't see thunder, but you can hear it. See the lightning. But then you can look down on the ground and see all is well. That's where you want to be. So when, you, when you're up here, you want to be down on the ground. But I, I can relate to a roller coaster. Everybody can relate to an amusement ride. You, you get in a roller coaster and, and when, when they... When they buckle you in that thing, they tell you to pull it down to you. And all of a sudden that locks. Could you imagine the horror or the, or, or, or the terror it would be if you were on a roller coaster and all of a sudden that thing began to make its ascent upward and you realized you weren't strapped in. Could you imagine... And, and, and trying to hang on with all your might. See, that's what many people are trying to do. They're trying to hang on to God with everything they can do. But God says, let me strap you in with my truth. Because, well, see, when if you were in that roller coaster and you realize you weren't strapped in, you'd try to bail out. You'd try to crawl out. I see it all. We've all seen it with little kids. They, they're squirming, trying to get out. But because that has got them locked in, they're not going anywhere. And I'm telling you the truth of God's Word will keep you locked locked in. Even when you go through turbulence, you, when you feel like giving up, His Word says, hang in there. When you feel like the disease is going to kill you, He says, by my stripes, I'm healed. The truth, when your marriage, when you're about to give up on your marriage, the truth of God's Word will cause you to hang in there. Many of you are ready to give up on life, but the truth of God's Word will cause you to want to live and not die. See, this truth, that the truth, this buckler will cause you to hang in. Don't be in a roller coaster ride without a buckle. Don't be trying to go down the fast lane in the tracks of life without being buckled in because you will bail out. So you want to give up. You want to bail out. You want to get out of your marriage. You want to get out of your predicament. You want to get out of your job. You want to get out of the circumstance you're in. But the truth of God's word will cause you to hang in there. See, get, quitting is the easiest thing you can do. But when you're buckled in, you're in it to the ride. God's word, the truth of God's word will cause you to go all the way through the ride. Even though many times you still want out. Anybody ever got on a roller coaster and said, man, this was a bad idea. I wish I hadn't started this ride. But you're in it. You're in it till the conductor stops it and releases that buckle. You're going to have to go through it. But thank God for the, the buckle of truth because it kept you in the ride. Amen. You should not be afraid. See, in this secret place, you learn, you, you, you'll get tired of being afraid. I said you'll get tired of being afraid. You, you got to learn that fear is of the enemy. And get tired of being afraid. And, and what will happen, it will cause you 
in this secret place, you'll learn to be courageous. Whether it be in the morning, whether it be at noonday, or whether it be at nighttime, you'll learn to be courageous. You'll learn to stand against the walls of the devil. Come on now. Too many people are not standing. When you've done all to stand, stand there for. Keep standing. Well, that's all you can do. But you've got to keep standing. Do not walk in fear because fear has torment. And many of you this morning, I walked into a local business yesterday morning. And there stood the, the, lady, the, the, the lady working, talking to another young lady. And they were both talking about how bad their panic and anxiety attacks were. That's fear. Fear has torment. But in Proverbs 3 and 24 it says, Be not afraid of sudden fear. If that's not a panic attack, I don't know what else it could be talking about. Because that's how they come. They come out of nowhere. You don't even know what you're afraid about many times. And it overtakes you. But in this secret place, you'll get sick and tired of being afraid. You'll get sick and tired of being threatened by the enemy. And you'll learn to be courageous. You'll learn to say, hey, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Christ has caused me to be a conqueror. I, as a matter of fact, I'm more than a conqueror. And he always causes you and I to triumph. And then he goes on to say, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I'm going to tell you this morning, there's going to be people, people dropping around us like flies. What's killing others? You're going to survive. Come on now. You missed, a, you missed the opportunity to shout right there. I said, what's killing others? You're going to be a survivor. Come on now. We all these diseases and all these pestilence that he's talking about coming up. What's killing others? And they're dropping all around you. You're going to stand. It's not because we're so powerful. It's not because God loves us anymore. But it's because the devil don't even know where we're at because we're in this secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide. Under the shadow. See if I'm hiding in somebody's shadow. All they can see is the one that's cast in the shadow. And it's God Almighty that's cast in the shadow. See you don't have to fall prey to the things that everybody else is falling prey to. You don't have to leave out of here like everybody else is leaving. Well I hear people say well you got to die something. No you don't. You have to die. It's appointed once for man to die, then the judgment. But you don't got to die of something. You don't got to die of cancer. You don't got to die of heart disease. You don't got to die of sugar diabetes. You don't got to die of depression. You don't... See, many times, so through, even through this place, when there are fallen rounds, you, you're going to look like everybody else struggling. Sometimes you're going to cry like them. Sometimes you're going to doubt like them. But the difference is, you're not going to stay that way. Come on. You're not going to stay that way. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. See, you may, you may be crying today, but blessed be unto God, you're not going to stay that way. Because what's going to happen? You're finally going to get mad at the, what's going on around you. Too many times we just say, well, it's not as bad as it could be, or it could be worse. But I'm telling you, if it's the enemy trying to deal you a bad hand, trying to bring death, then it's how much more worse do you want it? You'll sign in this place, you'll finally stand up and fight and fight and not be afraid when you realize you don't have to fear the enemy you don't care to engage the enemy come on the reason we don't engage is because you're afraid of him amen and why will you why will you stand up and fight instead of give up it's because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. That's a promise. I said that's a promise. He said you shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall you 
trample under feet. Too many people letting the devil call the shots. Let him trample all over us. We need to get the tables. We need to get flip the script on the devil and start treading upon him, upon the light adder and the young dragon shalt thou trample. Have you ever seen where somebody or heard about where somebody was trampled to death? They 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 want to get up. I mean, you, you hear about these uh, sad instances at, at maybe at a large venue where something happens and people are trying, everybody trying to get out the exit. And somebody falls and they get trampled. That person there wants to get up. But because the so much of the force and the multiple people, that's why I'm telling you the devil's going to want to rise up against us. But if we have the promise that we will trample him under our feet. Can you say amen? Then in Psalm 139, I'm talking about the secret place this morning. Psalm 139 verses 13 through 15. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. So you have to know that God formed you and you not yourself. God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And he called you. He sanctified you. And he ordained you. Marvelous are his works. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. See, our frame is not hidden from God. He knew us when we were being made in secret. And yet, even though he knew our frame, he decided to make us anyway. Even though he knew we'd fail him, even though he knew we'd come short, he yet decided to make you and I. And he knows our inward parts. God, you've never seen your heart, but God's seen your heart. You've never seen your liver, but God's seen your liver. You've never seen your skeleton unless it's been on an x-ray. But God sees the marrow in your bones. You've never seen your brain. But God's seen it. God knows everything about you. And he knows more about you than you know yourself. But yet he decided to make you anyway. Can I say to you this morning? You're one of God's best kept secrets. Let me go to this side. Y'all, y'all, this side didn't get it. You are one of God's best kept secrets. And let me tell you what God's fixing to do with some of his best kept secrets. God is about to take some of his best kept secrets and release them on hell. And he's going to bring chaos in the very plots of the enemy. He's about to release you up on hell and hell ain't going to know what to do with you. See, I'm here to tell you this morning, depression's got a new enemy. Disease has got a new... He's got a new enemy. Fear's got a new enemy. And it's you because you've been in this secret place and he's equipping you. And he's about to release you up on the enemy. See, in this place, he's creating desperate worshipers. I, I, I didn't mean to preach part of my sermon, but I'm telling you, it's about those, those desperate worshipers, those that woman had no place to go but Jesus. Her daughter was vexed, but he had, she had no place to go but to Jesus. And even though it seemed like she was going to be rejected, but then she just says, I'll tell you what, I don't know what else to do, but I, I'm just going to stay, I'm just going to put it at her, Jesus. Lord, yes, Lord. I'm telling you, the, first, the best thing you and I can do is agree with what God said, even if he calls you a dog like he did this woman. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs desire to have the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Well, woman, go home. Go home. Your daughter's well. 
I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God, in those place, in this secret place, God will develop you to be a worshiper. Will you just worship Him? No matter what's going on, you can just say, God, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You are, you are my strong tower. God is bringing up desperate worshipers. And in this place, He's bringing up prayer warriors that are able to pull down strongholds. I'm telling you, much of our mess that we're into today, whether it be at home, whether it be in our job, whether it be in our church, is because we failed to pull down the strongholds. We watched the enemy build them. Yet He has called... We are Holy Ghost filled jackhammers. Can you say amen? And we should be tearing down everything the enemy tries to build up. But yet, I believe we become supervisors on the job. And just tell the devil, well, don't build it so high. And I'm telling you, he's going to release some prayer warriors. They're going to start tearing down some strongholds. See, last night I was laying there and I, 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 God reminded me of something. I don't say this arrogantly. I, I, didn't, I didn't choose this. God chose this. And I know we got wonderful men in, 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 in our community. Wonderful men of God. But God reminded me of something last night. And once again, if you think I'm being arrogant or cocky, take it up with God. But God reminded me, Dwayne, you, I've given you dominion in this territory. You have dominion in Bonneville, not the enemy. I placed you here. I, I'm going to tell you right now, Bonneville, Kentucky was the last place I ever thought I'd live. The last place I ever thought I'd end up. And I can tell you, when I moved here, no disrespect to any of you here, when I moved here in, 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 in of 07 in August, a, a, a friend of mine kept saying, you, now look, I live 1.4 miles from this building. My friend kept telling me, well, you should, go up that, you should go up that church of God. You should go up there. I said, I ain't going up there. I don't want to go up there. I don't want, I don't want, to, know, I don't want to be up there. Until one day I was walk, working. This lady said, Dwayne, where are you going to church? I said, well, I'm, I've been going to different places. We got a new pastor. Would you come? And I'm telling you, in that moment, the Holy Ghost, I mean, began to flip in me. I, I kind of know, know what Mary felt like when, the, when John began to leap in her womb. There was something that began to leap in my womb that day, and God was trying to birth something in me. I didn't know what it was, and I said, I'll be there. And I, I ain't left since. I'm telling you, and God reminded me that you, I've given you dominion over this territory. I'm telling I'm serving notes right now. If I have to go by myself, I'm coming after the crackheads. I'm coming after the meth heads. I'm coming after the dealers. I'm coming after the perverts. I'm coming after the child abusers. Because I'm telling you, if Jesus said, except a man be born again, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm ready for God to release me. To get me. I've been in a secret place long enough. I'm ready for God to release me and wreak havoc on what the devil has set up in our area. I'm tired of the phone calls all the time. Of bad news. I'm ready for some calls of, of praise reports. But until we make our stand and stand against the enemy, that's all we're going to get. See, God is training up ministries and ministers. He's pulling them out of the caves. He's pulling them out of the desert. He's pulling them out of the obscure places. I guarantee you, that Nashville, people in Nashville has never heard of Bonneville, Kentucky. But they're about to. You missed the opportunity to shout. They probably don't know much about Bonneville up north, but they're fixing to. Because God's fixing to release some people out of this place and out of this community that are going to be revolutionaries they're going to change the very atmosphere because they become desperate worshipers they become prayer warriors they don't just going to talk about worship they're going to be worshipers they're just not going to talk about prayer but they're going to pray come on now we all talk about worship we all talk about prayer but I'm going to be frank with you including myself we do very little of it
Well, that's about to change. Brian, go ahead and cut me off. God's fixing to raise some people up. And God's been trying to raise some of you for years. 